Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are in our Fan Delver and Below uh, game setting. <laughs> um, and we're currently looking at our final um, part of Chapter 4, which is Wave Echo Cave. But we're not building that today. Um, I've got some issues with this around Neznar and his capability. So he's able to get bugbears and goblins and, and all sorts of things to help him out. Uh, he's got his doppelgangers and stuff. Yet when he gets to Wave Echo Cave, he is stopped by some relatively simple things. Um, we're expecting the players to get through them, but apparently this drow with all his resources can't. So there is a couple of things I want to do to mix this up. And I've been thinking while I've been away, or I've been away for a few days, of different things we could do. And I was thinking about introducing some puzzles to it. Now, the one I'm going to look at right now is not, <laughs> it's not going to be suitable for this. <laughs> so what I thought we would do is look at a way that we can create puzzles, um, like trap puzzles and things like that. So we're only going to look at one of them and you might be able to see on the right hand side I've already got a new scene that I created just for looking at this called Puzzle Test. It's just for looking at it. We're going to use two different things here. So first of all, the top one here, this is a drawing. Okay, so all I've done is create a drawing here. Uh, I've made the drawing the exact same size of one of our tiles and I've just put a letter on it. That's all I've done. So we're going to be utilising those. And the other thing is a tile we've created here. Uh, I'm new, just using an image I had. It's not the best image for this, but it's just as an example. I've got this image here of a tile that again is one grid size big. And we have got, I ought to show you, for those people who are not uh, necessarily au fait with what we've got, my active module. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, some of them are not relevant to what we're doing right now, uh, but some of them certainly are. And one of the most important ones we've got at the moment is, uh, I've lost it, Monk's Active Tile Triggers. Okay, so we definitely need that. And what that allows us to do, if I open this up, is it gives us this extra on the right here we can see this thing that says triggers so everything else it's just a normal tile but under triggers i can do these settings now we did look at this uh module as a separate video so i'll try and remember to stick it in a corner of the screen for you as a reference if you haven't watched that um that's going to answer probably a lot of the questions you've already got right now okay so what can this actually do for us and how can it help so you can see when we've got trigger selected, we've now got uh, setup, actions, and images. So on this setup tab, I've got that this tile is active. Uh, I've got it uh, to allow all tokens, regardless of who they're controlled by. But the trigger is when a token enters this tile square. Okay, so it's quite straightforward. Uh, allow when pause, yep. Um, I haven't got once per token. I'm leaving that on for a particular thing. And under actions, I have got only one thing. Attack the triggering token using our dart trap. Now, we did look at dart traps before. Um, and that was all kind of groovy. And that all looked really good. And that worked very well. Um, I haven't got anything under images. But what I've done is when you are doing this uh, attacking you have to pick an actor to make that attack and we created an actor before called dart trap so let me show you that actor here it is um, <clears throat> so under its features it's got dart and that's what we're using for the dart trap but as you just saw i've added some spells to it so what does that mean what we can do is for each one of these tiles we can have a different attack done. So I've got the actor on screen down here. I have added on a tile where the attack is a dart trap, or we've got um, acid spray, chill touch, fire bolt, poison cloud, and shocking grasp. So we've got some different attacks there. So if I just uh, grab Sorryman here, every time he walks onto one of these, so he walks onto the dart one, you can see immediately it tries to attack him. It has hit him, 
so we can roll our damage. There we go. Soriman, you take three points of damage. He can then go and do that. He can move on to the acid one. Because it's an attack, it's asking him the way that acid splash works is he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. He can select whether that's advantage or not. Let's just say normal. He makes it because it was only a DC 11. He's going to take no damage. Chill touch. Again, that's a attack. Fails to hit him. He takes no damage. Firebolt. So you can see all I'm doing is, again, it misses him. All I'm doing is moving in one square and it's automatically bringing up. So in this case, we're back to poison spray, um, which is a saving throw one. He can make his saving throw. He succeeded. He's doing all right here, isn't he? <laughs> and then last one, shocking grasp. Again, it's an attack which also didn't hit him. So we've got lots of different um, types of attack that we could have. Okay, so how do we turn this into a puzzle trap? Let me show you. So I'm going to select my tiles layer and I'm going to copy all of those tiles. So control C and then I'm going to paste them. And then I'm going to paste them and then I'm going to paste them and then I'm going to paste them. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of them now. All of the ones on the left are going to be dart traps. All the ones, these ones are going to be acid. These ones are all going to be chill, uh, chill touch, fireball, poison cloud, and shocking grasp. So where does this lettering come in? So you can see I've used the lettering down here. Let me select my drawings. I've used the lettering down here just for that example to show you what they were. But again, I can copy and paste those and just stick them down here out of the way so I don't forget which was which. Um, and of course, any one of these I can customize. So all I've done is I've gone to the top left to draw a rectangle, drawn it exactly the same size as the grid here. Um, called it, in this case, the text label says Dart. I've chosen my font and the size. So that's on that text bit. Positioning, I haven't really worried about that. The only thing I've done is under lines, I've made that line width, which is the border, I've made it black and I've made it one, so it's nice and thin. Uh, but you can get rid of that completely. You might make it completely transparent if you want to, however you want to do it. So let's just do that for example. So this dart now, there is no border. Okay, so I only really had the border on there um, to help illustrate stuff. Okay, so let me get rid of these ones off of here at the moment and go back to our one up here. Okay, let's bring this over. It's just This is just a letter. All right, so what happens if I choose to use this letter and I'm going to change this one to be an, uh, an M. Okay, I can copy and paste. I'm going to change this one back to an A. Should have done this first. Oops, come on, there we go. Uh, copy, paste. I'm going to change this one to be a G. Um, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to change this one to be an I. Copy, uh, paste over there. C. I'm going to paste it there. Can make this a W. Whoops. Did two at once, didn't mean to that. Now if you're following what I've done here, I've just spent spelt out the word magic wand going in a loop. Why have I done that? Is it because I'm crazy? No. Well, it might be. <laughs> okay, so for these purposes, what I want to do is I'm going to mark all of the rest of these squares with just with an X. But they could be any letters. You don't have to use letters at all, of course. Let's pop you in there. So copy that. Paste, 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 paste. 
So in this case, it's really obvious what is the correct path through here because everything that's not an X is the correct path. What I want to do on my tiles layer is all these ones that are the correct path, I can just easily come in, sorry, on setup on my triggers, just make them not active. That was not active. Um, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one that one, that one, that one. And I should, hopefully I can do all of those together and make them all not active. Just double check that. Uh, oh, it says that one's active. Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> I was hoping I could do all of them at once would be easier. Um, but obviously what you can do is create a uh, is create your your um, whoops create your your letter type stop it can be a bit difficult where the tiles overlap each other you need to be make sure you're clicking on the right one of course unlike me not active now I know this is putting quite a lot of tiles on um, and you know we need to be a little bit considerate of uh, resources and things like that but you can have a room where maybe there's a clue maybe it's written on the wall or something and they have to get past by walking across the grid now again i've got my black lines around mine you don't have to you can use whatever image you might just do it with images rather than letters but they are going to have to work out what is the answer to the clue and then just uh, clear my chat a second. Sorryman should be able to walk through spelling out magic wand. And he gets to the other side unharmed. Now if he's not sure what to do and he makes a wrong step. So if the party kind of go, oh, well, let's just go anyway or we take a guess. They're going to very quickly realise that this is quite a dangerous thing to do. And you could have it all of the damage is firebolt you could have all of it as dart traps you can you can do whatever you like you can make them pit traps um very indiana jones <laughs> you step on it and it becomes a pit trap so if you recall we did a pit trap back over in the red brand hideout over here and we created this pit trap here um and let's just drag Haley up that uh, if Haley tries to walk on this pit trap she can't see it it automatically makes rolls and everything in this case she failed uh, you've got the little scream we can now see the pit trap etc so we could if we wanted to is have everyone a pit trap except the correct one if you wanted to do that however you want to do it but i just thought it was a i don't want to go there go back to my puzzle test but i just thought it was a nice little way to add in an additional puzzle um so that we've got just got something else to do, some other barrier, some other problem to solve rather than it just being another monster. So over here on the right, I've got a different one set up. Uh, just if you want to take it to another level, as you can see, this one, it's just exactly the same as the others. It's just got fireball on it. <laughs> it's going to be cast by Dart Trap. So if Sorryman here wanders over and steps on this particular one, which could be part of this same outlay. That is going to, whoops, just go back to my chat. Dart Trap is casting Fireball. Now, I can place the measured template. Bosh, there it is. Sorry, man. Bosh, sorry, man can make his dexterity uh, save. Oh, got to make sure he's selected. And then whatever happens, he doesn't. Now I can roll that damage for him. That's a lot of damage. 30 damage, sorry man. Um, lovely, it works. Very nice indeed. Now, of course, if we were doing that in combat rounds, it would automatically time out the fireball. But of course, I can quite easily just uh, select that tile. Oh, hang on, let's make sure. Let's move, sorry man. Get out of the way, sorry man. Get out of the way. Uh, I can easily select the, I've selected the wrong tile. Uh, what is it I want to select? I, I want to select, 
<laughs> I want to select this one and I can delete it and there it goes. Uh, so it's not fully automated. Automated. The damage apply, uh, isn't applying automatically in this case. Um, but it was more kind of a proof of concept really and then just show you that there's other things that we can do. Now I've, you know, I've just chucked this on any old scene and things like that. Um, but it's another way we can extend those traps into into puzzles. Um, lovely. All sorts of things we could do. So that's one. Um, if there's any other kind of puzzles you would like us to look at, we can. Uh, anything that is going to provide other challenges to our party rather than just combat is really, really good. Um, and we'll see if we can get stuff working in Foundry because, of course, you know, we want to run things in Foundry. We want them to, you know, to be able to work in it. Uh, this does. Now, one thing I did notice when Sorryman was running around, he's... Uh, we've got a slight issue with the fact that he is on top of... No, sorry, he's on top of the tile, but he's under the letter. And I'm just wondering if there was an easy way to fix that. Um, we can make the text, you know, less obvious, but still. Let me drag him back a second. Let's put him on one that's not going to set anything up. Let's put him on the M. See, the M is over the top of where he is. Now, you might be fine with that. Uh, and I don't have a problem with it. It reminds them what letter they're on. Um, but that might not be what we want to do. Uh, so we might actually want to look at how can we, and I'm not sure how to do it, to be honest. It's a silly little thing, isn't it? We don't want to make it, you know, uh, I mean, we, we could make the letters less visible, but that's not really the point of what we want to do. Um, so position, who it belongs to, what its coordinates are, how big it is, how high, how, you know, its width and its height, its rotation. It's Z index, and I wonder if that's what it is. So if I put Z index minus one, that probably will put it. It doesn't put it. Oh, okay. I was wondering if that would put it uh, somewhere else, but it doesn't. Hmm. How interesting. I don't know what to do with that. That's fine. It's not a big issue. If anybody knows, drop it in the comments. That'd be useful. How do we make sure that our tokens are under? are over drawings, not under drawings. But again, I'm really not bothered and I would probably fade mine out slightly uh, and get rid of that line around the outside. Let's just do that with the uh, with this one as well. So if I faded that out to 0 0.5 um, and I would probably, yeah, just get rid of that line there. I personally think that looks a, a bit nicer on the board and they've got to work it out uh, and they can work their way through. But yeah, anyway, so you've seen how to do that. I will try and remember to put that link to that video at that bit that I said where we looked at the active tile triggers. Um, give it a go. Have fun. You can make this as big or as small as you want. The only challenge is, is the amount of um, tiles that we're putting on with active triggers and things could have a performance impact if you're doing huge, great, big ones. But it doesn't need to be big, does it? She cried. See you guys. Take care.